Hello, everyone. I'm Harvey Brownstone, and today's guest is an entertainment industry legend. He started out as a cinematographer and editor for ABC News, then became a TV programmer and movie host, then became a program director, and has gone on to hold senior executive positions at PAX TV Network, Orion, Hal Roach Studios, Filmways, and as a senior producer and creative consultant for Columbia TriStar, Lionsgate, MGM UA, Get TV, and Stars Encore Media. He's overseen the production and development of dozens of primetime TV series, including Young Blades, Hercules, Midnight Run, Dragon, Bad Sci-Fi, and he even created and produced the Laurel and Hardy show for the Comedy Channel. His TV movie producing credits include Attack of the Killer Bee movies, The Adventures of William Tell, several Robin Hood movies, Secret of the Black Dragon, and the Emmy-nominated TV movie An Aussie and Harriet Christmas. But his real passion is his love of Westerns. He's one of the founders and producer of the Motion Picture and Television Fund's prestigious Golden Boot Awards. He's written and produced top-rated TV movies and specials like Wyatt Earp, Return to Tombstone, Western Roundup, starring Roy Rogers, and he produced 13 episodes about John Wayne in Young Duke, the series. He also executive produced the brilliant episode about Roy Rogers on A&E's biography series. He has a phenomenally successful YouTube channel, A Word on Westerns, which is devoted to preserving, documenting, and honoring the history of Western films and TV shows. Since 2014, he's been broadcasting weekly shows featuring interviews with filmmakers and performers, most of which are conducted at the Autry Museum of the American West in Los Angeles. He's produced over 300 episodes spanning every aspect of the Western genre, including beloved TV shows like Bonanza, Gunsmoke, The Big Valley, and The Lone Ranger. And he's conducted many interviews about iconic legends like Wyatt Earp, John Wayne, Roy Rogers, James Arness, Joel McRae, Clint Eastwood, and many more. He's interviewed dozens of stars and people who were associated with the stars. His YouTube channel has 150,000 subscribers and well over 26 million views with thousands more added every day. His thoroughly prepared and highly compelling interviews are widely considered to be the definitive source of information for researchers, historians, students, and fans of America's Western genre. And if that weren't enough, He's also produced and hosted numerous live events celebrating Westerns, featuring A-list celebrities, and he's been honored for his contributions to films with a Golden Boot Award, a plaque at the Lone Pine Film Festival, and he's a member of the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, the Screen Actors Guild, and the Writers Guild of America. I'm delighted to welcome the incomparable Rob Word to our show. Rob, thank you so much for being here. Harvey, thank you. That is some amazing introduction you've given me. So can we leave now? How, how can we top that? That's uh, amazing. Thank you. You'll see. You can top it. You know, Rob, you've had so many job titles and you've worked in so many different areas of the TV and movie industry. Is there one particular job that you felt you were most suited for? I've, I've been very lucky, Harvey, and I've taken jobs that I felt that I could do or I wouldn't take them. And I've been lucky that watching television, which I did a lot of as a youngster, has paid off. And that's what I get to keep doing is watching TV and movies and giving people my opinion or figuring out ways. And I think this is the trick, figuring out ways to take the older ones that the sales guys don't want to do anything with and repurposing them and creating new product from those classics. And even with a word on Westerns that I'm doing now, which is a, a labor of love, to, to hear these stories and then to educate people who grew up loving them about the intricacies of the product of the movies, it's, it's really gratifying. And so maybe all of the things that you mentioned in that long preamble prepared me for what I'm doing right now, which is pushing out 
the love of the West and the Western genre. And nobody does it better, Rob. Well, thank you. That's that's kind because nobody else is doing it. <laughs> Maybe that's it. But well, it's... if that's true, it's because you've cornered the market. You really have found an audience and a niche that loves what you do, and it keeps growing. That must be so gratifying. It is, and it's the brand, but the Westerns are our brand. We ended up calling it a word on Westerns instead of a word on entertainment. Uh, and I'll give you a, a reason why it makes sense. Walter Hill, one of the great film directors, talked about Broken Trail. He talked about The Long Riders, which is a fabulous film. And I also wanted him to talk about The Warriors because I love that movie. It's a cult classic. I want to, just before we get to a word on Westerns, ask you a little bit about some of the other shows you've been involved with. How did you come to bring the Laurel and Hardy show to the Comedy Channel? I had been uh, head of marketing at uh, Filmways Entertainment. We became Orion, and I got an offer to be senior vice president of production and marketing at a company called Hal Roach Studios that had been sort of a dormant company because it had gone into bankruptcy in in the 60s when Hal Roach Sr. son, I guess, was overextended, as it were. And But there were assets, uh, the Laurel and Hardy shows and a lot of short subjects. And Hal Roach had been a giant in the comedy, entertainment, film business. And, and he was still alive. But the assets of the company had been purchased by a Canadian company. And they looked around and said, what can we purchase? What's out there so we can start again, essentially? And they looked at Hal Road Studios and the assets and a little thing called colorization had just begun. So they were told to ask me to come aboard and offered me this position and I said, yeah, I love Laurel and Hardy. I had written and corresponded with Stan Laurel when I was in junior high school and high school, I had letters. And so I took this position and and it was exciting to me because I'm watching these films again and they were wonderful. And hanging up in my office on the wall, I had this picture, happy days, Rob, good luck always, your friend Stan Laurel. And everybody thought I had faked that. Well, no, it was really from Stan. We have you to thank for bringing Laurel and Hardy to a whole new generation of fans. Now, I want to ask you about the three Robin Hood movies. Robin Hood the movie, Robin Hood's Greatest Adventure, and Robin Hood Quest for the Crown. You produced those three movies, so of course I have to ask you, is Robin Hood one of your favorite screen characters? It is in in any alliteration that you have, whether it's Errol Flynn or Doug Fairbanks or the one I grew up with on television was Richard Green, who shot straight with that Brill Cream commercial, uh, at least in the United States. And those were really well produced. It was a huge hit internationally, produced by Sir Lou Grade, ITC in England. And then it was brought over here along with the Buccaneers that starred Robert Shaw and other programs that that ITC had done, Richard Green, and the cast were just terrific British actors. What was interesting is the story was chronological. So the first episode of the Robin Hood was Robin Hood comes back from the Crusades and he sees Maid Mary. And the next one, he's on the bridge with Friar Tuck. He meets Little John. And and so there was a, a story. It was evolving. At that time, Kevin Costner was getting ready to produce the Robin Hood movie that he did with Morgan Freeman. And Fox was doing a a pretty big budget TV movie starring Patrick Bergen. So I went to the president of ITC and I said, you know, I can take these episodes and weave them together and create a movie. And he says, I don't think you can do that. Well, I'd already been at Hal Road Studios, we became Quintex where we had the colorization process. So I knew these scripts were very good. The performances were terrific. I could take these and, because my background was an editor, and and tell 
one story with uh, it ended with King Richard coming back at the end. And the, it was they, those were so much fun to do. These were quite successful for the company. Rob, when you started working in the TV industry, there were three networks. Now there are hundreds of channels and streaming platforms out there. What do you think of the current state of the TV industry? I think you need a big recording machine because there's so much stuff out there. You're going to fill up your hard drive with all the shows and all the programs that, uh, that are there. Tell me I, about your love of Westerns. What made you fall in love with Western movies and TV shows? Well, Harvey, I'm probably much older than you. So when I was growing up in those three networks that you mentioned, they were mostly running Westerns. It was a boom time for Western TV in the 50s and theatrically, too. There's, that's when Bud Bedecker was doing those terrific Randolph Scott films and big, strong Terrific Westerns were happening in the 50s. But on television, sometimes there would be two or three playing opposite each other on those three networks. So it was a tough choice. But that boom lasted about 10 years. But during that time, I it was my formative years. I was growing up. I was collecting eight millimeter films at the same time, mostly Laurel and Hardy then. But the Westerns, and my dad liked Westerns too. And we would go as a family back then to movies, to the theater. Because I remember before we had TV, I remember going to the theater to watch High Noon and Shane. And if we'd see a film like Bend of the River with Jimmy Stewart and that Anthony Mann directed, another fabulous Western director. And it was shot up at Bend, Oregon. My dad would say, hmm, that looks like an interesting place. Let's go there. We pulled a 19-foot Airstream trailer with a 1949 Ford. And my dad was an adventurer anyway. One summer, as you know, we went to Monument Valley in 1955. And on the Navajo Reservation, a guide said, they're shooting a John Wayne movie to my dad. You want to go? And so we stayed in Monument Valley for a couple of days and watched them filming, get this, The Searchers one of the greatest movies ever made, not just great Westerns, but perhaps John Wayne's strongest performance too, and it, just a classic. And so I've got a picture of me and John Wayne's got his bat wing shaps on, his red bib shirt and suspenders. And my dad says, uh, can I have my son taking a picture with you? And he goes, well, yeah, I'll bring him on over. And he sticks out his hand, which was huge, huge. And I put my little hand in it and I'm wearing a, a Fess Parker Disney Davy Crockett t-shirt. And dude gets down on his knees and puts his arm around me and looks at my t-shirt and says, so you like Davy Crockett, huh? And I go, yeah. And I'm thinking he must, he's talking about Fess Parker. I love that. He's thinking about making his movie, The Alamo, that had been a dream project for years and he hadn't quite done it yet, but that was a thrill, uh, certainly a thrill for me. Everybody's so jealous of that photo too. <laughs> yeah, that's the, we've shown that photo on the screen while you're talking about it, so everybody gets to see it. Of course, I have to ask you, Rob, do you have a favorite Western movie? That's a tough question, and I obviously get asked that often, but it's a toss up between several. And of course, The Searchers is right up there. And I bounce back and forth between The Searchers and The Wild Bunch. The Wild Bunch really is the Bible for great Westerns. And it's so deep and, and layered with meaning and revolutionary at the time. Whereas The Searchers, when it came out, it didn't get the respect that it has now. People said, oh, it's a John Wayne, John Ford, shoot him up, typical Western. But then, it inspired so many different filmmakers. You look at George Lucas and the story from his first Star Wars. It's The Searchers, you know, uh, hardcore. The, the film with George C. Scott, uh, Taxi Driver, Scorsese's film. There are scenes in that that relate to The Searchers in a way that's interesting because in The Searchers, there's never that scene. And this is a dialogue that Spielberg and Scorsese and Lucas would have all the time. There's no scene where Chief Scar 
beds down Natalie Wood, the captive. And so in Taxi Driver, you'll notice that Harvey Keitel, he's in New York, but he's dressed like an Indian with feathers and a vest and a, like a, uh, a long hair and a cowboy hat. And there's the scene where he's in the bedroom with Jodie Foster, the sort of kidnap, kidnapped girl. And it just is because that film meant so much to them and, it's, and it still does. It means a lot to a lot, to many people, but what a, what a terrific film that really is. What's your favorite Western? My favorite Western is High Noon. Mm -hmm. Why? I felt that the rugged individualism, the triumph of good over evil, is very eternal. It's very American, and it's very uplifting. And I loved the performances. Well, and what a cast too. But you know, Duke and Howard Hawks hated that movie. They said, "Here, you've got a professional, a, a Mars. He's going around begging." for help from cripples, from drunks, from anybody. And so they did as an answer to that, Rio Bravo, where everybody comes up to Duke saying, here, let me help. And he goes, no. <laughs> and, and so he is a professional and that's the difference. That's the answer to High Noon. I like them both. There's so many wonderful things about each movie. Well, I want to ask you about the movie Shane, which many people have said was the greatest Western ever made, but a number of critics have said the movie was overly sentimentalized. What do you think? I think it works. Uh, it really does. You've got the lone hero coming into town. And what's uh, It's beautifully shot, too. And George Stevens, one of the all-time greatest directors, he did a fabulous job with Shane. And it's interesting because it's told, and maybe one of the reasons it works so well and so emotional, it's told from the viewpoint of Brandon DeWilda, you know, the little kid watching this hero, this, this wonderful man, this gunfighter come in. And so it's, it's really a strong film, beautifully shot, and perhaps the best role Alan Ladd ever had it, it. His career was kind of going downhill and he did that film and suddenly he's next in drumbeat that he produced with his Jaguar productions. It turned into a massive hit with uh, Charles Bronson, the first film he ever used the name Charles Bronson instead of Charles Businski. Now, Rob, I always get a kick out of Westerns that have stars who were not known for doing Westerns. Did you ever see Johnny Guitar with Joan Crawford and Mercedes McCambridge? How could I not have seen that? Yeah, no, that is a, is certainly a classic and a cat fight like none other. But boy, they hated each other. And didn't that come across on screen? What did you think of the Westerns that Elvis Presley made? I liked those. His first film was a Western, Love Me Tender, a Civil War film that was originally written for Jeffrey Hunter and Robert Wagner because they had been big at 20th Century Fox doing films together. And then suddenly Elvis came in and it had been called originally the Younger Brothers, but then Elvis had a song, Love Me Tender, and there's the new title for the film. But I thought he was terrific. If it hadn't been for the Colonel, well, there might not have been an Elvis, but if it hadn't been for the Colonel, he might have become better as an actor because that's really what he wanted to do. And then he did a couple of other Westerns, one, the Don Siegel film, Flaming Star, right. he's terrific in that, too. He really. did Charo and Stay Away Joe. They were all Western. Stay Away Joe, kind of. That one's a tough one to take. <laughs> but it counts. It counts. It's a Western. Now, is John Wayne your favorite movie star? I guess you'd have to say that. I... I I watch his films and I can watch them over and over again and not just the Westerns. I like Trouble Along the Way and Hatari with that great score. He's just fun. And McClintock, it's slapstick and it's funny and it's John Wayne at his finest, I think. Well, finest comedy. He's just, he's so likable in that and lots of good stuff in that movie. What about True Grit? You must love that. Well, I like both versions. I had read the book. The book is a Charles Portis book. You laugh out loud. The book is marvelous. The, the lilt and the dialogue that you 
see in both versions of the film, you might think that's a little stilted, but it's perfect. One of them is a John Wayne movie. And so it's about do Kim Darby's marvelous in that. She's a little too old, but Glenn Campbell, not, not quite to that level. Duval is fabulous, beautifully shot, Henry Hathaway. But when the Coen brothers did it, they went back to the source. And some of the same scenes and the dialogue, it may seem stilted, but it's lovely. It's poetry. And it's about the girl. Jeff Bridges is terrific. Matt Damon, it's all wonderful. And it's fun, but it's a Coen Brothers movie. So both are good. Now, I asked you about your favorite movie. What about your favorite Western TV show? It's got to be Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke, there's so many episodes. The scripts are fabulous. And the characters, when it premiered in 1955, the characters were already fully developed because it had been on radio for several years. William Conrad, you hear that voice on radio, what power, what power he had in that. And Parley Bear as, as Chester, but those stories. John Meston is the man responsible for making that show real. He'd come up with these hard, gritty stories about the West that you look at those half hour Gunsmoke episodes on the TV and they are strong. Those are powerful. And of course, they got condemned for violence later. But what's so great about Gunsmoke is you've got really three separate shows. You've got the half hour black and whites that are strong. Then the hour long black and whites that ran several years too. Those are like many movies with directors like Mark Rydell doing several of those episodes and, and Robert Totten, fabulous directors. And scores by Jerry Goldsmith or Bernard Herman. These are like movies. And then you have the color episodes when John Mantley took over and the stories became a little softer, but it was more about the guest stars. And that's why I think the show was able to keep going for another 10 or 12 years in color because the characters were so strong and you had wonderful guest stars always. John Boyd, Betty Davis, Bruce Stern did multiple episodes and he is so watchable always. What's your favorite? I have three favorites, I can't decide. Certainly Gunsmoke, The Big Valley and Bonanza. I loved, mm -hmm. I loved Barbara Stanwyck in The Big Valley and I loved Bonanza. Lauren Green was Canadian, so we were all very partial to him. Of course, and of course Gunsmoke, you know, the, the, the stories on Gunsmoke were so riveting. So I can't decide, but I grew up watching all three. Another one, Have Gun Will Travel, it's got to be up there too. It's so good. Rob, as I'm sure you know, in recent years, we've been living through the era of cancel culture, where political correctness and current societal attitudes about equality, racism, indigenous people have caused a lot of controversy regarding some of the old classic Western movies and the stars. There's even a movement to eliminate Gone with the Wind from our classic movie lexicon. What's your take on all of that? Bullshit. It's all bullshit. It was a different era. You know, I've had like A. Martinez, who's, who's part Native American on, and we've talked about that, where that's a different era. You had Jeff Chandler playing Cochise a couple of times. He did a terrific job. I'm sorry. You can't, you can't go back and change history, I think. It's only my opinion, but you look at Charles Bronson. He played... Captain Jack in Drumbeat, the film I mentioned earlier with Alan Ladd. He played in Apache with Burt Lancaster. And, you know, they, they would cast him in those parts. He had, the, had a great look. These days, they don't do that anymore. So that's fine, too. The, the Native Americans, uh, it's like Reservation Dogs. What a terrific show. And not only is it in front of the camera, but it's behind the camera, too in the stories and in the direction. And there's, what a what a terrific program that is. Have you seen that? No, I haven't seen it, but I'm with you on this issue. It seems to me that we can learn from history, but to try to erase history is yeah. just wrong. I agree. It's, it's, these were classic movies. They were of a time. And mm -hmm. I've, I've seen stuff 
at the beginning of films now, this is, a, you know, from a fine movie that this was made in a different time, so don't take offense. Well, okay, don't take offense, but it is a classic movie and appreciate it for what it was and enjoy the performances. And, and The Searchers, Henry Brandon, Jewish, he's Chief Scar and he's fabulous. He played Indians a lot in his career but he was a working actor. And these days, you've got fabulous people. I mean, if, you, if Will Sampson is gone, Chief Dan George is gone, but Chief Dan George in Clint's movie, Outlaw Josie Wales, I think Clint's best film. In fact, there's a painting I did behind me right there. Outlaw director, Clint, a great movie, but Chief Dan George steals the movie. He's just hysterical, wonderful movie. Everything about that film works. Do you like the way that Western movies and TV shows have evolved over the years? I mean, when you look at something like Yellowstone, are you happy with what's happened to the evolution? I, I again, everything is changing. They're so much more violent than they used to be. But but Yellowstone is like, how silly is that? It's Dallas with murder where the there's nobody you really like in the show. Kevin Costner is, I mean, Fabulous actor. Everybody's very good in it. The money shows up on screen, but your hero, they're murdering people, burying them in the backyard, and then he runs for governor. I don't know. It's a fantasy. It's like the Gene Autry fantasy where they had horses and cars. This is a little bit different, but Taylor Sheridan is responsible for bringing the Western back. Have you seen 1883? Yes, I loved it. Isn't that a wonderful film? And that's violent but it's so true to the era. The costumes are fantastic. Wardrobe, everything about it, the props, it's watchable over and over again too. And I, I, I enjoy 1923 too. Now, Rob, I wanna talk with you about your incredible interview program, A Word on Westerns. Your YouTube channel has 150,000 subscribers, over 26 million views. First of all, congratulations on the spectacular success of your show. Thank you. It's, it, it is a labor of love, and I'm just so happy to be able to do that. Tell me, what made you decide to become an interviewer? Well, I had done some of that in, in Florida. I had a, a syndicated radio show called Focus on Film. A radio station had come to me to ask if I wanted to do a show because I was hosting movies at the time while still being a news producer and cameraman. And I said, sure. So when I came out to LA, I just was getting job offers out of luck that were different. And if it sounded fun and there was money in it that could pay my bills, I would say yes. Who are the interviewers that you've admired over the years? Uh, well, the best one right now is Jimmy Kimmel. I don't know how he does it, but I'll see a star on another talk show and I'll watch it if I'm interested in that star. And then that same star will be on with Jimmy. And he he relaxes them. He listens to them. It's funny. And that's that's what I try to do. I, As you know, the people say, what's the trick, Rob? Your interviews are so good. And I'm going, I listen. That's the trick as you listen and then I'm prepared just like you're prepared because then you're able to direct the conversation in a way and get surprises too. Because then the it, people I interview, they go, wow, this is the most fun interview I've ever had, you know? Now you've done over 300 interviews. They're all really fascinating. I'm just wondering, if there are any episodes of your show that particularly stand out in your memory as a favorite? You know, the next one is going to be my favorite because they're all a challenge. They're all different and they're, they're fun. I try to make them fun. To perform in front of a live audience that is right there with you, the audiences that show up at the Autry are so into what we're doing. They've been coming for 10 years and the, People I interview come back and sit in the audience. So we just did Gregory Harrison last May, and he had a great time. He drove up from San Diego, and he says, can I just come? I may just come and sit in the audience. I said, you're welcome. I mean, we're having a good time because we'll do it. 
and then have lunch and everybody hangs out and it's free. Maybe that's why it's so popular. It doesn't cost anything for people and they're film buffs and the people who watch the show and now our audience is 50% from outside the United States. And that's all because of COVID. The comments, and I probably spend at least 30 minutes every day responding and reading them because you don't want some snarky comment coming in. The people are smart. They give us information. There's film buffs watching and they're sharing their knowledge with the rest of our viewers. And so it's a wonderful community of, of fans out there who love movies and particularly Westerns. Well, and like I said, nobody does it better than you. Your show is tremendous. And I've learned so much from watching you. Now, if you don't mind, can I mention a few classic movies and ask you what comes to mind when you hear these titles? Oh, a test. I didn't know there was going to be a test, Harvey. But go ahead. Go ahead. There's I'm... no test because I just want to know what comes to your mind when you hear these titles. I'm going to start with Blazing Saddles. I love it. I love it. What comes to mind is Slim Pickens coming out of that tent saying, you've had enough beans, boys. And I've had Burton Gilliam on who was fabulous. And I don't know if you've seen that episode, but he talks about how Mel Brooks was begging him to take that part. And he was a fireman in Texas. He, he's, he was a great guest. Everybody's been a great guest because you're hearing these little stories that nobody else is sharing. And I loved, I love that kind of stuff, but I love that movie. So that's what I remember. And there, there's so much to that film. Uh, Gene Wilder was magic, you know, and, and uh, I could go on and on, you know. All right. I'm going to give you the next one. Cowboys and Aliens. I kind of liked it more than I thought, but some of it was just too stupid. Uh, but I wish it had done better business. Okay. How about Billy the Kid versus Dracula? Well, what can I say? I I met John Carradine. Bobby Carradine's a close friend. It's a fun movie. What's not to like, right? Well, there's another movie I want to mention. It's from 1975. It's one of my favorites, Rancho Deluxe, starring Jeff Bridges and Sam Waterston. It's a sweet little film that shows the West as a, a safe place. Did you like it? I not only liked it, I loved it. I audio recorded it on a cassette player and the Jimmy Buffett music. And this is before anybody knew who Jimmy Buffett was in, in Livingston, Montana. They shot it. I went, I stayed on a ranch for a few weeks in Livingston, Montana because I loved it so much. But I use music, Jimmy Buffett's music, along with Ennio Morricone for my wedding. I got married outside in Florida and used some of that music it's uh i love that movie and slim was fabulous in it too and yeah. harry dean stanton that's a terrific movie i'm glad you like that too because that's a movie nobody talks about and they should they should discover rancho deluxe everybody out there rancho deluxe is the movie you mentioned the remake of true grit you've mentioned the kevin costner version of robin hood what about the 2013 remake of The Lone Ranger starring Johnny Depp. Me too. My comment. <laughs> okay, we're on the same page. What about, are you a fan of spaghetti westerns? I I am. I, I think I like to read about them more than watch them, but the Leone ones and the Corbucci's, Solima's, those are all watchable and terrific. And if it's got a score by Ennio Morricone, you can't help but be excited by watching it visually. But, you know, they're like, let's make a Western. We don't know what we're doing, but let's make a Western and play Cowboys is the sense that I get. But Leone's are classics and superb. What a wonderful filmmaker he is or was. Now, I have to tell you, Rob, as a gay man, my favorite Western movie in recent years was Brokeback Mountain. Did you see that movie? I did, and I I, I liked it. I thought it was very good, and everybody complaining about it. I'm not going to go see that. It's the same sense and the same people who are saying they weren't going to go see the remake of True Grit. Right. And 
you know, there's a lot of wonderful stuff, and it is a Western. And people who say it's not, forget it. I, I read the short story, too. Yeah, I'm really glad to hear you say that, because I know you're a macho man's man, and that's the audience you attract. But there is something very touching about that movie, you know, and the era that it portrays. That's that is a part of history, even if people don't want to acknowledge it. And I really I find your response very refreshing. So I thank you for that. Well, I, it's a terrific movie and the performances are good. I think Jake Gyllenhaal is one of the finest actors working today. And of course, Heath Ledger, tragically in his, you know, he's gone way too soon. But I liked him in The Patriot, too. Have you seen that? Mel yes. Oh, I thought Heath Ledger was brilliant. Yeah, that's a great movie, too. So, Rob, you've accomplished so much in your life and in your career. What's the career achievement that you're the most proud of? I guess having a fine young son and, and being happily married and having a lot of friends. I, I No, wait a minute. The question was, what's the career achievement? Oh, that is a career. You don't think marriage is a career? No. <laughs> you, know, you don't think raising a child is a career? It is it's a full-time job. How you manage your time. I was offered, uh, I, you know, I was head of uh, programming and, and scheduling at the PAX Network. And so we had a series called Young Blades that was the Three Musketeers, the Sons of the Three Musketeers shot up in Vancouver and it was fun, really terrific. Well, when NBC bought PAX, the network, we, you know, we all got let go and the company in Vancouver offered me a job to come up and be executive vice president for Insight Films. And I said, no, because I'm not going to move. I have a five-year-old son and I don't want to be missing. It's my only one in a second marriage. And so it's like, and it's it was the right decision to say no, but somehow I got lucky again. Lucky Rob, they call me. And we worked out a deal where I would fly up and it's the same time zone. I've shot stuff in Toronto and you lose a day going back. We did TNT with Nelvana back there and for three years and you lose a day. So Vancouver, it's the same time zone. You just fly up, you're there in two hours. You can leave at seven, be at a meeting at 10. So I said, yes, because we worked out a deal where I would fly up Tuesday morning and return on Thursday evening. It worked out great. And then work here on Monday and, and Friday. And only once, I think, in three or four years did I have to work through the weekend because we were so organized. And Kirk Shaw was a terrific leader in terms of giving people well, not much money to work from, but giving them freedom. And we got crews because we said, we're not going to be able to pay you what you get on these big features that are coming into Vancouver to shoot, but we will give you steady employment. You won't go home late. You'll be home every weekend with your family. And so people made that decision. And that was sort of the decision that I made. And I was able to, to go up there and boy, we were making... 35 movies a year. We did two a month for the Lifetime Network and one a month for the sci-fi channel, the Creature Features. And it was exciting. We had multiple edit bays going on all the time because there was a, just an overflow. We were just continuing to work. And it, it was very exciting and a lot of fun. But it was also fun to see my fine young son grow up. I love that you have your priorities screwed on right and I want to tell you, I've so enjoyed meeting you and giving your fans a chance to get to know the person behind the interviewer. How did it feel to have the tables turned on you where you're the one getting the questions? I don't like it, okay? So everybody <laughs> always says, when, let's do, have somebody interview you. And I'm going, no, 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 that's the reverse. But if it helps bring new viewers to the show and of all of you out there who don't know about a word on westerns just go to youtube and type in a word on that's all you need to do it pops up and there are hundreds of interviews and if you like it leave a comment because i'll read it and share it with your friends because that's how we get the western genre to to continue its growth that it's going through right now in january of each year 
I do a memorial for the people that we've lost, like the Oscars do, but I spend a little bit more time than they do, obviously. And of the 25 Western stars who died in 2022, 10 of them had been guests on the show. So aren't we blessed that they were able to come and share their stories? And you've preserved those stories for eternity. What you're doing to maintain the legacy and honor the memories of our favorite Western movies and TV shows, and of course, all those great stars and stuntmen and crew is monumental. Thank you so much for doing that. Thank you so much for your show. Thank you so much for taking the time to appear on our show. Well, thank you, Harvey. And good luck with yours. Yours is growing too in leaps and bounds, isn't it? Yeah, we're very, very happy. Thank you again for taking the time to speak with me today, Rob. Thank you and good luck. And let's help keep the Western genre alive. Amen. Our guest has been writer, producer, and interviewer extraordinaire, Rob Word. You can watch all of his wonderfully informative and entertaining interviews on his YouTube channel entitled A Word on Westerns. And while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe to his channel. You can also follow him on Facebook on his page entitled A Word on Westerns and on Instagram at Rob Word TV. My name is Harvey Brownstone. Thank you to my producer, Steve Silver, my director of programming, Deborah Batsafin, my PR director, Laurie Towers, and my entire team at the XPTV One Network in the UK. Thank you all for joining us. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out all the great interviews on the Harvey Brownstone Interviews YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified when new videos are posted.